Exhaust gases are very corrosive, and because they are, they cause exhaust gas recirculation valves, or EGRs, like this one, to fail. Our EGRs feature a corrosion-resistant stainless steel sleeve, which covers the internal piston. More important, the piston beneath that sleeve is coated with black PTFE, similar to Teflon. This also resists corrosion and prevents the piston from sticking, another common failure mode. The benefits? Less corrosion, superior wear resistance, extended life, performance, and reliability, and of course, satisfied customers. Advantage? Wells. Hi, I'm Glenn from the Wells Vehicle Electronics Technical Services Department. And I'm Jeremy from the Catalog Department. And what we're going to talk today about is just some tips about some ignition modules. Um, first off, Glenn, what, what's uh, this little packet of stuff here? This is a special heat sink compound. This comes with any ignition control module that is installed in or on a distributor. This is specially formulated to transfer heat away from the module to help preserve the electronics, make them last longer. Okay, now will this be used on exterior mounted uh, ignition modules as well? Well, it was originally just for distributor mounted modules, but there are exceptions to that rule. Now Ford has a, a TIF module on their uh, Bronco and Ranger trucks that is remotely mounted, and GM also used a distributor type module and remotely mounted it on their pickup trucks and on the uh, LT1 type engines, it, which is also mounted uh, uh, on the ignition coil bracket. These uh, type modules also require that heat sink compound to be applied to the bottom side. Okay, what about, uh, what about this one right here? Does that one require any sort of heat sink compound? Okay, these are just a couple of examples of other remotely mounted modules. This is an early Ford module. This has an all aluminum housing, which is actually the heat sink itself. And this one here is an example of a GM distributorless ignition module. And this has an aluminum backing plate, which acts as a heat sink. And these type of modules do not require any of that heat sink compound to be applied. Okay, I know another common question we get. Um, dielectric grease, can you use that in place of heat sink compound? Uh, that's a good question. I get that a lot too. Um, the dielectric silicone is not an adequate substitute for the heat sink compound. This compound is specially formulated to transfer heat away from the module and it will withstand higher heat than a, a dielectric silicone. Um, th that is, silicone is not a substitute for the heat sink compound. Okay, um, next one, what, uh, what, is this, what is this guy right here? Okay, for, uh, Wells has developed an ignition control module test machine and um, the test machine uh, is capable of testing 55 different part numbers of ignition control modules. Uh, the test manual comes with complete instructions on what test lead to use, how to hook it up, and the procedure uh, used to run the machine to test the modules. Okay, what, uh, what about the ones that aren't in here? What do, you, what do you do with those? Okay, generally speaking, any module that's not compatible with our test machine, uh, about all we could do is test the circuits going to the module. If all the electrical circuits going to the module test out okay, then we would have to assume that the module itself has failed. Okay, um, what about, I know what, one common call we get, a lot of times there's certain vehicles where the, the parts just aren't serviced separately inside of the distributor. What, uh, what can you say about that? Oh yeah, that? that's, uh, that's true of uh, early Asian vehicles, uh, Hondas and Toyotas most notably. Uh, uh, in the factory repair procedure on some of these earlier, and, and I'm talking uh, 80s and 90s model vehicles, um, the repair procedure from the factory uh, recommends replacing the entire distributor assembly because repair information and sometimes even parts availability is scarce um, and repairing these older vehicles, uh, the standard operating procedure is to just replace the entire distributor assembly. One thing I did forget to mention too, um, our modules that they do need this uh, heat sink compound, they will be in the box along with an instruction sheet. And as always, um, if you have any questions whether it needs it or not, just give our 800 number a call, which is 
558-9770. And prompt two gets you into cataloging and prompt three gets you in technical assistance. Um, one last thing, Glenn. Um, a lot of times we'll get uh, calls on vehicles where they're looking for an ignition module that we show in the catalog, but uh, with the transition of technology in certain years, it's just not on the vehicle. What can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, we get that call quite often too here in the uh, services department. Um, certain years on certain models of vehicles, uh, the transition from distributor type ignition systems to distributorless or to coil on plug type systems, uh, oftentimes the module is uh, still listed in the parts catalog, but it's not on the vehicle. And during those transition years, uh, different manufacturers have incorporated that module function into the computer itself. Uh, the easiest way uh, I've found to determine whether a module is used on a particular vehicle is to simply look at a wiring diagram. If it shows up on the wiring diagram, it should be on the vehicle. If not, then that module function would be handled by the computer itself. Okay. Oh, I did forget to ask you too. Does this do anything other than ignition control modules? No, this is strictly for ignition control module testing. Okay. Well, I think that's about all we've got. I think, uh, you got anything else going? Yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Okay. Um, Once again, my name is uh, Jeremy. And I'm Glenn from the Wells Technical Services Department. And we hope to see you again next time for CounterPoint Live.